Hi guys, I'm Amal. I'm on Camden Town Radio, so keep rocking. Okay, so I'm pleased to say that Amal has joined us in the Camden Town Radio garden today. Good afternoon, Amal. How's it going? Hi, good afternoon. I'm going, doing well. Look at the weather. Can't complain, can I? Yes, it's, it's great weather for Camden, even though it's October. It's beautiful today. <laughs> We're so lucky. Yes. Have you been wandering about Camden before you arrived today? or? Well, actually, I wander about Camden quite a lot right. because um, I don't live too far. Ah. And um, what I do is a bit of a circuit and um, yeah, have a bit of a walk. Yes. Visit Amy Winehouse's old neighborhood and go back home. Yes. So you have been a regular going out in Camden Town over the years, I believe. Yeah, I have. I mean, I've, I've lived in London on and off for several years. Yes. So when I do live in London, or I have lived in London, Camden is one of those places that I like to just come here, have a bit of food, yes. chill, have a walk, you know, go yes. by the river, potentially have one of those awful waffles or crepes <laughs> that I'm not meant to have. Right. Um, but yeah, it's really nice. <laughs> yes. Have you any particular favourite venues? Um, I actually like Coco. Yes. I think Coco is one of the main venues, obviously. It's mm. very famous, I uh, guess for its historic background, yes. um, what it represents to Camden, what it actually means. So I think for if you're an artist, specifically like me, um, yes. that's kind of the dream place. To, to play and to perform one day, so yes. I just have Coco in mind. Right, yes, that uh, certainly would be a good place to play. Have you been into the the restaurant at all? Um, no, I haven't. I haven't had the pleasure yet to yes. go into the restaurant, but um, if someone wants to invite me, right. let me know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now as well as being involved in music, you have another a number of other interests such as fashion. Yes. Um, I consider myself to be a designer yes. and I really love art as per se so I guess I just fusioned that and um, I decided to create a handbag collection ah. um, so I actually have a malfashion of handbags yes. and they're manufactured in the south of Spain Right. the leather is premium I must say okay. we actually um, manufacture in um, a very big factory of a very well-known brand right. which I'm not going to mention okay. but it's um, very high up there yes. so I consider myself to be very blessed on that front and um, we've been doing pretty well I mainly sell online yes. um, I mean COVID came and it messed up a lot of things I yes. guess so it was a bit of up and down but yes. um, generally like it goes very well and I love fashion I love to express myself and I love art so yes. why not and might a clothing range be in the pipeline as well? Or? I would love to one day have a clothing range, but if I'm completely honest, I've learned a lot business-wise and I know just how much sacrifice that entails. Yes. And I'm not sure I want to focus on that at any point soon, okay. but you never know. Maybe once I have won my Grammy that I have in mind, yes. <laughs> modest of me, of course, <laughs> <laughs> maybe at that point, you know, I think, I'll do a range and then I'll take it more serious and I'd love to be in Paris Fashion Week and do Milan Fashion Week and all the fashion weeks and it would be a dream. But um, it takes a lot of dedication, a lot of hard work, a lot of sacrifice. Yes. You know, it looks pretty and it looks amazing, but people do tend to, you know, underestimate how much hard work it actually takes. Yes. Now back to music now. When we last spoke, you had a new single out. So where are you with things at the moment? So when we last spoke, it was June. Uh, I've released on the 1st of June my first ever track, yes. which is called Dirty December. And that was basically inspired by my move to Ghana. I lived in Accra for two years, nice. and I guess the whole Afrobeat got to me, the vibes. Uh, my first language is Spanish, yes. so I tend to fusion the Spanish with the African um, in my tracks, in most of them, yes. and I'm a big R&B fan, so I guess ah. you can hear those nuances in the background. Okay. Um, so I did my first, yeah, so I released my first um, track on the 1st of June, yes. I released the second track uh, on the 1st of July, okay. and then I released the third track on the 1st of August. Ah. Um, so yeah, that went very well, and that was kind of like a small EP that I released over summer last year. Yes. And recently, this summer, I released a track which was a bit out of that zone of Afro-Spanish. Okay. It was actually dance. 
So it was like a kind of house dance track, yes. um, and it's called Set Yourself Free. Nice. Uh, and to be honest, it's doing extremely well. It's been played in many radios across the UK yes. and worldwide, to be fair. And I couldn't be more happy with the result. I oh. didn't, I didn't really think that it would have this result, but yes. um, I'm blessed. And you know, it's it's something that pushes me out of my comfort zone. Yes. And I think, you know, you never know. Maybe that could be my next type of genre. In terms of performances, have you been? also performing at venues as part of the release? I haven't started performing yet, to be honest, and I think it's the one thing that I'm really excited about, I really want to do, but at the same time, it's just really like nerve-wracking. Yes. So I think you really have to prepare and you have to be ready for it because yes. I guess, you know, it, it's not easy. I think hmm. we go to performances and you see these artists and you think, oh gosh, you know, because they're so good at it yes. that it comes so <laughs> naturally and everything's easy, but it, it's not. And it's a lot of pressure and it's a lot of, you know, stress and tension and you have to learn how to manage it. And, you know, yes. you need to learn how to have a lot of self-confidence as well and how to connect with your fans and your audience. Yes. And it's it's not a joke and it's not easy. So. I hope to be able to do my first performance, you know, next month. Okay. Um, I'm not sure where yet, but um, yeah, I'll let you know. Okay. What would the lineup be? Would it be yourself accompanied by a guitarist or something like that, or how? Yes, I think I would like to have a guitarist and a pianist. Yes. Um, and if I could throw in as many um, <laughs> classical instruments as possible, I would. Yeah. I just think that symphonically it sounds better, and if you have the privilege or the honour to actually have a band, it would yes. be fantastic. So okay. that's exactly what I'll be doing. Yes. Would there be any dancing as part of the performance? Or? I love to dance. I, I want to dance now. So <laughs> I'm just thinking that, you know, a performer has to perform. Yes. Part of the performance is dancing. It's moving. Sometimes you perform less, sometimes you perform more, but you need to perform and keep your audience engaged. And yes. in order to do that, I need to be dancing about. And it's also Spanish and African. How can I not be oh. dancing? Okay. So, so going back to your roots, now you mentioned that you did spend some time growing up in Spain, was that right? Yes, so um, I was born here in yes. London, yep. at the Portland Hospital. Oh, not far away. <laughs> exactly, yes. around the corner. And um, I lived in the UK until I was 10 years old. So yes. then when I was 10 and a half, 11, I moved to Madrid. Okay. Um, and my mum is Spanish, and my yes. first language is Spanish. And so from the ages of 10, 11 till I was 18, when I was ready to go to university, I grew up in Madrid. Yes. And actually now with the whole David Beckham story coming out, it's funny because I watch it and David is the one who gave me my first job, obviously, ah. because his kids were in my school. And it meant that, you know, the, the adults, which were us, yes. <laughs> would actually get practice with the kids. Ah. And I just got Brooklyn. So um, I would go to their house and when Victoria and David were talking about it in the documentary of Netflix now recently, it's yes. funny because all the images, I remember their house, I remember their car, ah. I remember our <laughs> school runs, you know, yes. how the press used to attack them and, you know, hound them. Um, so yeah, growing up in Madrid was actually different and fun. Yes. And um, I was in that period of the Real Madrid Galacticos, so oh, yes. I can never run away from football, clearly. <laughs> Yes, and on the topic of football, your, your father, of course, a famous footballer, John. Now, I believe growing up, there was quite a competitive... It was quite a competitive environment in terms of sport, but not just football, other sports as well. Um, do you mean with me and my dad or with who? Yes, within, within the family environment. Yes, I guess the fashion family is quite competitive and I yes. think sports runs within our genes yes um, I have a sister who's a hundred meter sprinter ah. um, I have a brother who wants to be a footballer um, my cousin is a, was a footballer for Reading yes. um, my uncle Justin my dad um, I guess that's the competitive kind of ambitious streak that we have yes. um, I have it too but unfortunately I'm not a male and um, at the time uh, female football wasn't as popular mm. so I guess you know I, sh I would have been a footballer it yeah you might nice. have gone into that yeah it would have been Had fun been... athletically but I don't enjoy the sport as per se okay and what about other sports then when you were growing up were you more into other 
I think my thing was sports, but I think it was more to swim. I ah. was a very good swimmer. Okay. Um, I was good at doing polo. Yes. I was good at, you know, horse riding jumps. I was good at tennis. Right. Uh, I was just never really that great at football. I didn't really try football like that. Okay. Um, I yes. even played baseball at one point oh, here in well. London <laughs> and uh, even basketball. To be fair, I've tried every sport. Yes. I'm quite competitive. So okay. when it comes to trying something, yes. I really go for it and I okay. want to be the best at it. Yes. Um, which isn't sometimes the best, but <laughs> that's me. Okay, now you mentioned there you've quite a few memories of Camden Town and the area, and I believe you also did meet up with Amy Whitehouse when she used to live Yes, in so I was fortunate enough to meet Amy um, in Camden actually one night. I think it was one of the nights where she was papped and she was barefoot. Okay. And um, I just remember that she was just a, a vibe like her presence she's got a very she had a very big aura yes right and i think like camden was her town yes. <laughs> so it was almost like she belonged to camden and that's what she ran and that's what she lived and where she breathed and you know it camden everything to do with camden just reminds me of her yes um and it's sometimes quite difficult because you know she's she's dearly missed and um camden won't be the same without her no would you say her music has an influence on yours at all or? I think her, her, the soul Amy had is an influence to me. I think, yes. I, you know, you can't believe that this tiny girl like this has just so <laughs> much soul, so big, so powerful. Through her voice, yes. you, could, you could feel the vibrations of soul. Yes. It's pure passion. It comes from a very special place, you know. So I'm inspired every time I hear her music, every time, you know, her tracks get played in the club or out. It's, it's beautiful to hear. She, she was very unique. Yes. Very special. And speaking of people from the London area, I believe you also went to school with Daisy Lowe, is that right? Yes, I did actually. Um, me and Daisy were in class together. Um, there was a bit of competition there. Right. Um, <laughs> I remember we were both very sporty. Okay. And um, I'll never forget because my dad used to come and give out the, the prizes right, oh, yeah. on sports day. Yeah. So I used to really push. Yes. And she used to really push. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, you know, they named me Captain of the Blues. And ah. she was deputy captain. Oh, right. And she wasn't really happy with that. <laughs> no. Sorry, Daisy. Um, you know, but I do have long legs. So does she, actually. Right. We're actually quite similar in some points. Okay. Um, quite different. Yes. Um, but I I remember growing up with her and it was a lot of fun. We used to dance a lot, yeah. we used to be very creative right. and I remember playing in her house in Camden. Oh, okay. Yeah, um, yeah she had a quite a large uh, house and I remember it had a lot of floors, very yes. creative, her mum Pearl, beautiful person. So yeah, I remember Daisy very well. Yes. Now in terms of influences, you mentioned Amy as an influence there. I believe one of your favourite singers is the singer Sade, is that right? Yes. Um, I actually get excited when I hear Sade because she's, uh, musically for me, she's what I look for. She's my inspiration. And yes. I think it's partly because she's also mixed race like me. She's half Nigerian like me. Yeah. Um, so I feel like there's a lot of synergies and I feel like she's a very respected like woman. Yes. And I think what she embodies is what we kind of need to follow as a woman. That's yes. how I feel. Um, she she's one of my main kind of obsessions yes. <laughs> musically talking <laughs> speaking um, and then Aaliyah I think is like the more modern oh, right, yeah. kind of um, icon that I have because yes. it's she's also kind of elegant and but she's she's very up-to-date and she's more R&B yes and I kind of grew up in that R&B era so for me Aaliyah, Sade, Amy Winehouse and yes. then maybe towards me getting a bit older could have been a bit Beyonce yeah you know so that's me all females yes. <laughs> now you mentioned next month you may have a performance coming up is that right yes so I've been offered a residency ah. once, uh, once a week okay um, and I won't say where just yet all right. but it's very exciting for me because I actually haven't performed as I said before so yes. this is gonna be you know quite big but right. it's going to give me what I want, which is to engage with people, to be able to discuss who I am, yes. who they are. You know, I, I want to have that kind of connection with the fans and the audience. Yes. And I feel like nowadays, because everything's online and everything's so, you can't touch anything, yes. people don't really get to kind of know the artist like that. Well, um, nice. And I think it's important. Yes. 
Is that, can you tell us, is that going to be in the London area or? Yes. Oh, okay. It's going well, to be uh... in the West London area. <laughs> right, okay. Well. Um, yeah, and I wanted somewhere quite small. I want it to be intimate. Yes. I don't really want something large and something shiny and glitzy. No. I just want to be able to interact with my audience and I just want something very simple so that I can practice and also come to terms with performing. It's not, it's not easy. Yes. Great, well thanks a lot Amal for speaking to us today. We wish you the best with your upcoming residency shows and also with any new music. Thank you so much, it's been a pleasure. The weather's amazing, the radio station's incredible. I love Camden and I hope to see you guys again. Hi guys, this is Amal for Camden Town Radio. So keep rocking.